Okay, welcome everyone. What a beautiful summer day it is. Really feels like it is the start of summer. Memorial Day weekend is coming up. So I am here to talk to you today about training momentum in gaps. As Jeff said, I appear on TV. Actually, if you're around Memorial Day, if you happen to be lounging around, I will be on Fox News at four o'clock on Neil Cavuto's show with Charles Payne talking about the overall stock market, the economy, and where we're going. Today is an exciting day to talk about what I do based on gaps because we have a huge, huge earnings report tonight, which is NVIDIA. I'm sure everyone has heard of NVIDIA. That will be out tonight after four o'clock. And again, I don't trade stocks usually into earnings because we don't know what's going to happen. NVIDIA could gap up. NVIDIA could gap down. I don't know what it's going to do, but I will tell you that NVIDIA's earnings will affect the overall market tomorrow, which is Thursday. So welcome, everyone. Again, my name is Melissa Armo. I appear on TV. If you'd like more information, you can always email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And again, I try to post my TV hits after the fact on uh, my YouTube page as well. So we're going to talk today about training. We're going to talk about making money because, of course, that's what we go to work for every single day. And a lot of people right now in this economy are concerned about the future. Whether they're already retired and they're feeling like they're getting pinched because of the economy and inflation, or if people are nearing retirement or even working full time but feeling like things are costing so much. And again, even though interest rates are still very high and inflation is high, the market seems to be screaming higher. I mean, we've made brand new all-time highs in the last week, which is very, very interesting because you say, well, how could that be? Well, the Fed is expected to lower rates once before the end of the year. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I will tell you that I don't think it's going to make much of a difference really on inflation or overall interest rates because even if interest rates drop by a quarter percent, it's not really going to change that much. If you look at mortgage rates right now and many, many other things, things seem to be costing so much and I don't think a quarter percent drop is going to do much, but the market thinks that. So again, perception is reality in the market. So all we really care about as active traders, I'm an active day trader. I day trade stocks on margin and I run a live trading room. And I also trade options, but I'm doing short term options. I'm doing fast options, the weekly. So I'm trading gaps, but it's based on momentum, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit as well. But it's the American dream to become rich, successful, financially independent. The problem is that not everybody has a plan of action to make that happen in the market. Uh, you saw in the last two weeks, actually, I talked about this on TV last week, which happened with all the Reddit stocks. GME, for example, those stocks seemed like they were going to go up and then all of a sudden totally deflated. You can't just trade things willy nilly in the market and expect to have a good outcome. It's the consistency that you really need in order to be successful trading. And in order to have that consistency, you have to have a trading strategy that you do and that you use on a regular basis that you can make money every single solitary day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So again, I trade gaps. I wanted to put in here the stats for 2024, so far year to date. This is the day trade room. I call the trades live in the room. I call it the stop, the entry, and the exit. So far this year for the room, we're up 460,447. This is with an average risk per trade of $3,000 per trade. Most of these trades are shorts, which I'll talk about as well today. I prefer to short. I actually have a niche in shorting. And then I have the stats here for the options newsletter. Again, like I said, I do options. Now I do a mix of calls and puts for options, but I also risk more money for my options because I like to hold overnight. Also, like I said, NVIDIA is out tonight. I may do an option NVIDIA. NVIDIA is very expensive. So I'm risking an average of $8,000 per trade on my options trades, but you could do one contract. The nice thing about doing options is where people love options is because you don't have to have a margin account to do options. You can open up a cash account and trade options and buy and sell them. We're just getting in. We're buying the calls and selling them. We're buying the puts and selling them. And again, it's all based on the gap. So we're up over 1.2 million for the year so far today. It's been a good year to trade. 
Why? There's been a lot of activity. Again, the market has been up, it's been down, it's made new highs, but I try to focus on specific stocks, individual stocks, which again, we're gonna talk about some of the trades here as well. Now, when I talk to people, and again, I've been teaching people for a very long time, I think the most important thing, if you're, if you're at a point in your trading where you really wanna get serious about it, you kind of have to just get to that mental state where you let go of the past, and you just move forward, and then you move forward at all costs. I find after teaching people for as long as I have, like I said, traders tend to hang on to bad trades or uh, stocks that they lost money in or even negative trades that are down or things that happen to them that they don't want to let go of and just move forward. You can be successful as a trader, but part of that is just changing what you're doing. Because if you're doing something and you're not making money at all if you're losing, or if you're making a little bit but not enough, then, or even if you're not making anything, you're basically break even, you're not where you wanna be and you have to change what you're doing and you obviously then don't have a good enough strategy to be able to do this, whether it's full time, part time, or anything at all. And again, that's what's really important. You wanna be able to make money, that's the whole reason we do it. But it's really about changing your attitude first. Get yourself in a positive mindset then you can make it happen. And again, for as long as I've been teaching people now, which is over 10 years that I've had the company, the stocks, which since I started trading, which was 16 years ago, let me tell you, you are stronger than you think. You might have had bad experiences trading. And again, some people did with those Reddit stocks. You might have had bad experiences, but you can get over it. You are stronger than you think. You might feel weak in the moment or when things aren't working out. And again, you may get into that negative mindset, but the sooner you turn it around, the better. And again, it doesn't have to take a million years, a million months, a million weeks to do it. You can change your mindset right away today, and then you can move forward, and you can go forward, and you can learn something new and do something new today, tomorrow. So what I do, I focus on the morning, okay? I trade between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern time. That's the time of the day you'd have to have available to trade with me. I also like to do the fast, quick trades in and out fast. In fact, we shorted Target today. We got in and out very quick, okay? So I might be in a trade five minutes, 10 minutes, two minutes. We were in and out of a trade on Monday in less than two minutes. If you're someone that has a passion or interest to learn and trade the stock market, if you want to work from home, and again, if you're someone that is looking for a new career, if you want to do this, this is something that you might want to think about because, again, the nice thing about trading is it has unlimited income potential. And again, you need to learn a set strategy to trade that's successful, and you can open up a trading account, and you can be anywhere in the world and trade the U.S. stock market. And like I was saying, today the weather is 85 degrees here in New York. It's absolutely gorgeous. In fact, I just got back from a walk in Central Park. Summer is a great time to trade gaps because you can trade quick and fast. You can get in and out quick by 10 a.m., 10, 15 Eastern time, and you can have the rest of the day to yourself. And again, summer is that time where you don't want to be sitting behind a computer for six and a half hours a day. I don't trade till four o'clock. I've never enjoyed doing that. And again, the longer that you're in trades, the more you're at the mercy of what's happening with the market whether it's Fed announcements or something else that could happen, economic news. If you're in and out in five minutes, 10 minutes in trades, you don't have to worry about those things. And again, I'm just looking here. If anybody has any questions, you can plop it in the room as we go by. Is my, is my mic okay? Is, can everybody hear me? Is this good? Yeah, you, you sound, sound great. great to me. Oh, jinx. <laughs> okay, you're, you're coming through great, Melissa. All right, um, keep wonderful. It, keep... Thank you. Okay. So let's talk about making money. Again, why is not everyone successful trading? Why isn't it just as simple as going out, doing it, taking one class, and moving forward? Because not everybody that trains does the same thing. People do different things, and that's what makes up the market. Again, I was talking earlier about NVIDIA. NVIDIA is going to gap on earnings. Again, I don't know where the price is tomorrow morning in the open, but I guarantee you that some people will go long it no matter what it does, and some people will short it no matter what it does. So how do you know what to do? My method on gaps is based on following institutional money. So I came up with a method where I learn and process all the information in the morning, okay, before the open. I know what I'm doing even before 9.30. Like I knew I liked Target this morning when I rolled out of bed, okay? 
I go through the process and look at the daily chart and I rate it to determine if institutional money is going to buy it or sell it. And that's how I know if I want to go long or go short, okay? And so it's for me, it's about finding the best pick and using a consistent system. And if you're doing something all the time, and again, staying with it, staying with it, staying with it, you're going to do a lot better off. First of all, it makes trading easy if you're only using one system. Second of all, if you're doing it for a long time, you can get really good at it. Many people jump around from thing to thing to thing, and they never really get good and become an expert in any one set strategy. Well, then how are you ever going to get anywhere? Do you know what I mean? So that's the other key takeaway as well. You really have to stick with something, okay, because you want to get good. And then, then you add on the size, like I was showing you in, the, in my results, but I've been training for a long time. Most people lack a consistent winning system. And I would say for me personally, it's about the pick. It's about the pick. It's about the entry. It's about the exit. It's about all of it, but it's really about the pick. Okay. So in order to become successful, you have to be serious. And really that means learning from someone and taking direction. And again, as I was saying earlier, actually, when you get in that point that you say, I really, I, I actually think I can do this, you say to yourself, even though it hasn't worked out for me in the past, you say, I know I can do it. When I was teaching myself how to trade, again, this was a long time ago, 16 years ago, I, I knew I could do it from the jump, but I didn't know what I was doing. But I never stopped believing in myself that I could figure it out. It took me over three years to figure out the system that I have been doing for as long as I've been doing it, but I never stopped believing in myself. And I'll give myself all the credit in the world for that because if I had if I had given up, then I would have never become successful. I would have never figured out what I know right now, and I wouldn't even be where I am right now. So the fact is that if you're willing to put the time and effort into this, if this is really your dream and you want to make money and you really want to be successful in the stock market, you have to believe in yourself. And sometimes that does mean learning from someone else and taking direction. Again, while there's plenty of bad classes out there to learn and take, there's plenty of good classes out there to learn and take as well. And having a mentor really is extremely important. Like I said, I call the trades live in the room. And learning from someone may cost money up front, but it really saves you money in the end because it's brutal if you're just trying to figure it out on your own in the market. And I know this because I'm talking from experience because I did it myself in my own life. So let's just talk about here briefly what is a gap. So we're looking here at Disney. Everybody knows Disney. This had earnings. We we're talking about earnings. This was just two weeks ago. So the stock closed here at one price, four o'clock Eastern time. That's when the U.S. stock market closes opened the next day at a different price, and it happened to open down, so it opened at a lower price. So this is a gap. So the stock closed here, gap down, open, dropped. We shorted it, okay? So this was May 7th, we shorted Disney. This is a day trade, it's a day trade on margin. We also bought puts, and again, you could do both. I like to do both for various reasons. I like to do options so I can hold overnight for a bigger move, and I also like to do day trades to get in and out quick. We shorted this here at 106.60, and again, this is an advanced trader risk, okay? I added at 106, average price was 106.30, exit, this was a really good trade. Almost got $2 out of it, huge profit. This is a day trade. This isn't even an option. So this is a really good risk to reward here for the amount that I risked on the trade. Again, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. In this case here, this was a gap down. There are gap ups, there are bullish gaps. I prefer to short though. I prefer to short. And the reason I prefer to short is because I find that shorting gives me a niche and stocks fall way faster than they ever, ever, ever rally. Okay. So again, I like to be in and out of trades very, very fast. Here was another one we did. This was May 8th. This was the next day. We did shop. Okay. Shop had earnings too. Stock closed here, gap down. Again, closed up here well above 75, open in the morning, under 65, open dropped. You could have done a put, you could have done a day trade here. Again, you could have even done a swing trade in the shop because look at how it fell so nicely. We shorted this. Again, this is a day trade. You could have done on margin. I called it in the room, 63.15. I added at 62.39. Average price was 62.77. Then I did another ad, whopped it on, got the move down, and made $7,100. Again, this is the shop. This was May 8th. So again, I prefer to short because stocks fall faster than they rally. And I find that shorting gives me a niche because many traders, many, many day traders have no idea how to short or they're, they're, they don't know what to short. They're shorting things that are actually the opposite of what they should be doing. 
And again, they're going against institutional money. I'm going with institutional money. Again, going back to Disney, actually, or even the shop, um, you can see here that this went, I don't know what happened here. I can't go up. There we go. This fell and fell off a cliff. So again, this got sold off with institutional money, okay? So the stock here from the initial day that we did it, that we did the short, was in the 60s, dropped, fell, broke 16, all the way down. This all ha also happened very quick, very fast, within a week. So again, institutional money did what with the shop? They dumped it. They dumped it and sold it off. So again, you'd want to be short, or you would have wanted to be short. I haven't looked at this in the last two days, okay? And, you know, the other thing about active day trading is, too, a lot of traders, they can wrap their head around this idea of going long, buying low and selling high. But shorting, for some reason, I don't know why I've always loved to short. I've always shorted since I started trading. But for some reason, people prefer to go long. It's just something that they gravitate more towards. But as crazy as it sounds, as bullish as the market's been, again, the market made brand new all-time highs in the last week. We have been shorting. The results I showed you, options and day trades are mostly shorts. And so, again, if you have a strategy that works, you can do it under any market conditions. What if the market would turn? What if the market would fall? What if the market would sell off like a hot cake tomorrow? If NVIDIA tanks, which no one's expecting it to do, but what if it does? What if it does? If NVIDIA tanks, the market's going to tank. Again, I'm not in any market trades or NVIDIA trades, because I don't know what it's going to do. But if that would occur and set up that way, again, it would be very unexpected. And again, it'd be one of these things where you really need to know how to short. It's extremely important. Again, panic comes in when stocks sell off. And that's how you make money. You're, you're making money on the panic, the panic play. But success or failure is everything to do with the quality of your system. Again, it's one of these things where if you have a good system and you apply it every day, you set your risk, which your risk should be equal or close to equal in every trade you take. Obviously, there's no 100% win in anything. No system has 100% wins. If anyone tells you that, they're just full out, stop out, don't know what they're talking about. You are going to have some trades that lose, even with me. You saw that in the stats. But your expectation should be that you have more winners than losers. And that's how you move forward. And if you're using a system all the time that you have 100% conviction and you believe in it, you know it, you're doing it, you understand what's going on, you will be okay with one loss here or there because you know the next trade is going to be a big one or the next one's going to work and the next one's going to work and the next one's going to work. And that's how you're able to put together a week and a month and continue to trade and then all of a sudden poof you know you have a year and again it's about 10 steps forward and two steps back and five steps forward and one step back and that's how trading is it's just like any other job you don't got to work every single day if you've had a regular job where you show up for work in an office which people are going back to work now where everything's great everything's perfect and you have a great day and no stress that's not reality every single job even jobs that offer specifically jobs that offer a huge income potential, you will sometimes have stress. But the beauty about trading is, again, the freedom to do it from your own home, the unlimited income potential, which some trades that we do, again, are very, very big. And again, the fact that you basically are in control of your own destiny. Like, you know, if I want to take off, I'm taking off Friday. I'm taking a long weekend. Markets close Monday. I'm taking off. I close the room. We're not trading. Not a good idea to trade around the holiday, mar low volume. And again, you work for yourself. You don't have to ask permission from a boss. Can I take off? Can I use a vacation day? This or that. You are in charge of yourself, okay? So the number one key ingredient to becoming successful as a trader is having a specific system and strategy that can offer you reliable and consistent profits on a regular basis. Trading success and financial success in the market is really, it's by pure design. It's like I never take a trade by accident and make 10 grand. You know, it's just, that was never my fate, even when I started trading. I was forced kind of like to figure it out. And again, now when I make money, it's because I'm doing the right thing. I'm reading the gap. I'm taking the correct entry. I'm getting out where I'm supposed to be at the target. But anyways, it takes a niche. That's something that you really, really, really got to have because so many people are trying to trade the market. So many people are trying to trade uh, and make money. And everyone's really competing for the same thing. Okay, so if you want to be different, successful, do well as one individual trader, 
then you have to do something different, okay? So for me, my method is based on reading institutional money that moves stocks and gaps. So I'm looking at everything, rating the gap in the large time frame or the daily chart, and then I'm taking my trades on a one minute chart, honing it down to the detail and specifications of doing it on the one minute. So I make the pick on the daily, and then because I'm an active day trader, where I'm putting in the stop and getting in and out quick in several minutes, I'm taking the trade on the one minute chart, okay? Any questions here before I continue on? How's everyone doing? Just taking a peek. If you have any questions, I can see them on the side. Anyways, like I was saying, everything I do is based on a checklist. It's a 26 point checklist that I get up in the morning and I go through and I rain it. And again, I will do that tomorrow with Navinia and anything else that I get. And that is just, I, I get up and I do it. And then you're not, you don't get in your head about it. Well, what do I think about this? What do I think about that? What are they saying on Bloomberg? No, it's, you take the guesswork out of it by actually following the checklist. Anyone that's a professional follows checklists. A pilot has a checklist before they take off. So if you're going in to get an operation, they have a checklist. Did you not eat anything? Did you do this? Did you do that? They ask you the list of things. You have to take it that seriously, literally. It's like you are performing surgery on the stock. So I mean, it's a surgical procedure where I'm in and out, boo, 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 and I make thousands of dollars in 5, 10, 15 minutes. That's literally how you can do it. And again, it's, it's the focus and the detail. So again, my niche is the golden gap system, which follows large institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money, or what I call the golden gaps. That's what makes a gap in the first place. The ones I showed you earlier on the charts. The professional gaps that happen in play on stocks are formed by one thing, and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. So by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side, and then you play it, okay? And you enter the trade. Whether you do as a day trade or an option is up to you. Again, I like to do both. And again, you don't have to sit on top of the option and stare at it. You know, you could put the trade on and let it play out. You could put a sell order to fill you at 50% or 100%, return an investment for an option. You could do options, you don't have to be in the room every day. But anyways, gaps are an event and they create a sense of urgency. Hurry up, get me the hell out. That's what people are saying when the panic comes in and they want out of the stock. Thus an action is being forced by participants of the stock and this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading golden gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. And again, then you, you're, you're never gonna move a stock. Even again, the Reddit stocks, Retail traders could come together and temporarily, temporarily move a stock, but they won't have the pull on it or the hold on it. And you saw that in those Reddit stocks in the last week because institutional money wasn't buying them or the stocks wouldn't have completely sold off right after the jump up. So you, the, the sustainability on a move, and I don't care if it's a bullish move or a bearish move, is in the power that comes with institutional money that buys or sells stocks. And so if you play with that, it makes it so much more easier to make money because you're really not going to move a stock. And no amount of people in a trading room are going to move it either. And even if you think you get a temporary move in a group of people in a chat room, whatever, it's going to be short lived at best. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's not something that you can rely on. Definitely not something you can rely on long term. Any other questions here so far? Good volume. OK. Very good. So anyways, what I was saying was the purpose of my rating system is to help me determine who's in control. Who is charting the next course of the stock? Okay, who's at the helm of the ship? Who is the captain, the bulls or the bears? Okay, because if you can determine that, again, you're gonna make money. Who's in control of Disney? The bears, the bears, okay? So again, you wouldn't want to be long. You would want to be short, Disney, or you got in and got out of it, okay? How do I tell where the institutional money is or when it is moving? Well, I see the gap, 
I'm not predicting the gap. I wait till the gap occurs. So like I said, NVIDIA is going to have a gap tonight. And then it will have a gap tomorrow morning. And then I use my 26 points to determine the control of that gap. In other words, how I want to play it. Okay. So here was another one we did. EXPE. This was a day train. This was back in April. Stock close here, gap down. Again, this is a gap. Stock closes at one price at 4 o'clock, opens at another price at 9.30. Boom. So we shorted this. Entry was 120.30, exited at 118.10. I could have held this. People always ask me with my results, are these the best results you could get? No, I'd, I don't always get the low end of the low of the day exit in my puts or my day trades. I'm trying to get in and out quick for the day trades. And if I have a good trade where I make money as an option, I get in and get out. I don't think it's a good idea in this market particularly, and I don't care if you're going long or short, to hold stuff to a piggy target. It's once in a blue moon that you'd hold something to a piggy target. But anyways, I just want to show you, this was a really nice gap. It was a good golden gap. We did it. We made money. It was a good train. But I want to show you here where this ended up going on that particular day that I did it and got out. It went all the way down to 115. And I, and I, I mean, I could have made way more. But again, my job every day is to try to get the best pick, get in, get out, and done. Okay? But sometimes things keep going after I get out of them. Uh, that happens, you know, often. But how do you know when you're doing well? You're chunking it out. I always tell people, if your goal is to make $1,000 a day, once you have that goal in, you don't want to let it go against you. Okay? So you got to book it. So chunking it out is how you put together a week. You take it, get the move, book it. Take it, get the move, book it. And again, that's another uh, critical mistake I think a lot of traders are at where they've been doing something for a long time where they've had big losses and then when they find a good trade, they want to be a piggy in it and then they have a good trade that goes against them and then they lose in it, which is crazy. I mean, that's debilitating. Don't do that to yourself, okay? So it's very important to make sure that you are also booking money when you are in a trade and it goes. Uh, we did Disney again. We did Disney again. I mean, we've been all over this thing, actually. So Disney was here. This is the second Disney we did. This was on the 15th. Entry was 102.60. Added at 102.40. Average price was 102.50. Exit was 101.55. Again, this kept going too. This was a really nice trade, 66.50. Again, we've been on top of this. So I had called puts in this that were a lower strikes out on this particular day that went this day again you can stack trades too uh if you want to now again we're usually doing the weeklies you could do something two weeks out you could do uh wider strikes out as well again it depends what you want to pay for and how long you want to hold something but again we we had we already had puts on actually the day that this fell my expectation was this would go, and then, again, you don't really know, but you know it's coming up, and you know it's coming soon, and then it did it, and then we also did the day trade there. Um, how do you rate the gap on target? I, we rated the gap on target good. We got in and out of target, and we shorted it, and I know that it, I know that it rallied up against it, but target actually is a good gap. So we, we shorted it, we got in, got out, and I also called a put in target. And, and I have it on, and we'll see where it goes. So again, you know, part of trading is having the confidence and having the conviction to play things out. Again, this, this Disney, the puts that went on this day, took a week. So if you killed the puts, well, I called some here that you could have got out of here. But the bigger money was in this, boom, when it fell. And again, the trade was up a little, down a little, sideways, and you had to wait for the profit. So again, if you understand what's going on, you will stay with something. Of course, you have to have your risk aligned. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't take too much risk in something. And on top of that as well, again, this is what also makes the market. So when you understand what's going on and you believe in it, you're not going to get worked up if a trade doesn't go the second that I call it. I'm talking about options here. Okay, so the day trades, we get in, and we have to be flat before 4 o'clock in the day trades. 
But anyways, we made money in Target. I had a perfect entry on that and a great exit on that. In fact, I think I taped the room this morning. I'll put it, I'll put it on YouTube later today or this week. But anyways, as far as holding a trade that's an option, if I call a trade on a Monday and it's down, I don't kill it. I don't kill it. I believed in it. I rated the gap. I loved it. I liked it. There was a reason I didn't. Again, follow the system. If you don't follow the system, then what are you following? You're listening to somebody on TV. You could, you know how many people on TV thought that they were going to lower interest rates five times in 2024? I never said that. Actually, if you go back and look at my hits in the fall of 2023, I said I didn't think that the Fed was going to do that. I was right. I was right. That was a year ago. <laughs> and the reason I said that because is because I'm a consumer and I knew that inflation was still too high. At this point now, though, again, with, with where inflation is, the Fed is fat and happy just letting things play out and ride out and not pushing rates down a lot one interest rate drop or even two in 2024, which people think is going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm going to say that Monday with Charles Payne on Fox. Even if two happen, big whoop. If if mortgage rates are above 7% and then they get down to six and a half, that's nowhere near where we were, you know, two, three years ago when interest rates for mortgages were 3% or 4%. So again, I don't think that a quarter percent drop or half a percent drop in the next six, seven months is going to change inflation that much. Part of the reason also, and I don't want to get too off, off point here, part of the reason also that cost of goods and services are up a lot is because oil prices are still too high, okay? And the administration is pulling into the oil, taking oil out of the oil reserves to try to keep prices down, but that's really like, you know, a fake, phony way to do it. The oil prices are still too high. And of course, everything that we buy, everything that we get, all our Amazon deliveries, everything, how does it get to us via truck or car? And so the price of oil is high and up, a gasoline. And obviously, we're going in the summer, people go on vacations. All these things are things that people have to think about. And food is up because of that as well. So anyways, think about the control factor. Think hard about it. You're like, okay, wait a minute. This makes perfect sense. This makes perfect, perfect sense. And again, I could name... 100 charts out there where I could show that. So one of the reasons, well, then why is the market at brand new all-time highs? How could that possibly be? Well, one of the reasons the market's at brand new all-time highs is a SPY, okay, which has in it the financials. I always said that you're never going to have the market at new highs without the financials, with the, well, the banks are roaring. You had a back, again, this is a year ago, rewind a year ago, when the smaller regional banks were going under. And there was panic in the market and we sold off. A lot of those got the bigger banks scooped up the little banks. And, they're, and now you, that could happen again. But they have a handle more on what's happening. So big banks are becoming bigger and small banks are going under. And again, banks have capitalized on, on getting all this cash from, these, uh, from people wanting to put money in large banks, even though they're paying squat in interest rates from money markets and savings accounts people want to feel that their money is safe and these banks aren't going to go under jp morgan chase has made brand new all-time highs goldman sachs is running up like the dickens so uh, the financials are in a tear okay and so that's one of the reasons why you've had such a strong market and you say well you scratch your head we'll say that how, how does that make any sense when interest rates are high yeah but banks are still making a lot of money and banks are filled with cash They've gotten so much cash from these smaller regional banks going under, some of which they took over, you know. Anyways, let's talk about institutional money and gaps. There's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock, and it's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money. And again, we're talking about banks, okay? Banks actually have trading desks, okay? Banks have trading desks and have professional traders and big traders, okay? that actually trade, and you have hedge funds as well in the market. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market, okay? So success requires a plan. It's the 26 points. So if you decide to come and take my class, this is what you'll learn. So my class is 14 hours long. I go through all the 26 points. I teach you how to make the pick in my class. It's an entire weekend. And then you learn the entries, and then you learn the exits. But again, the benefit of being in the live room is 
you get the trades that I'm calling. So making money trading is really about the consistency, the proper trade selection. Trading successfully means focusing on taking trades with institutions and being on the side of institutions increases your odds to make profits because institutions make stock trends and the market, okay? Institutions move stocks either up or down. If you want to get paid, the key is to be with the side of the large institutional moves, to be with that power of money. You've got to make good choices when you trade. Because again, in order to make money, you have to take the risk. You put the risk on. So you want to be thoughtful about the risk. So my system, if you want to come and learn it, will tell you how, what I want. How do you make money in the market? You trade a strategy and a system that's prof profitable. For me, it's golden gaps, which you can come and learn from me in the class. What should you trade? Stocks at gap and rate 20 points or more per the 26-point rating system. Again, that's what you learn in the class. And when do you trade them? Early in the morning in the open when they set up and trigger. Okay. Now, if this is something you want to do for a living like I decided a long time ago, I started out small. My average risk was $150 a trade. I set my goals and then I went from there. Okay. Many people have these big goals and that's great but they're not even profitable <laughs> start getting profitable consistently week by week by week and then you can increase your goals all right and i was saying earlier take quality entries don't over trade don't be piggish okay following the checklist will help you it helps your confidence it helps your conviction now we were talking about options again i do options as well this is a newsletter that gets sent out usually in the pre-market sometimes during the day but i sent this at 9 26 this was starbucks may 1st we did the starbucks puts so the newsletter has a symbol to strike the expiration and the type okay so we did the starbucks let's look at may 1st was here stock close here gap down and we bought the 75 puts i just want to show you where it was and it dropped boom 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 so this was a nice trade here. Uh, this was actually pretty cheap. It cost $1.60. You could have done one. You could have bought one put. And again, an advanced trader risk of $8,000. You could have made $7,000, 88%. If you wanted to do $1,280, eight contracts, again, you could risk an average of $1,000, $1,200 a position size. This almost was 100%. And again, this is a fast trade to me. And again, this is a cheaper way to do it. If you don't want to buy the, I mean, if you don't want to sh short the stock on a margin account, because again, to day trade and short a thousand shares or 2000 shares of S Starbucks, you would have needed the, the buying power to do it. Whereas if you wanted to do the put, this is all the money you need to do the put. And again, you can open up a cash account at a broker with as little as $2,000 in trade options. Now I wouldn't risk half your account in one trade, but I'm just showing you, you can start slow and do one contract and you could have, you know, risked $160 and you would have made money in this trade with a small account, okay? Any other questions? Brendan's saying something about a list or something. I teach the checklist in the class. I don't know if that's what you're referring to, Brendan. Any other questions? Anyways, knowing where something's gonna go before it goes there, is how you can make a lot of money. Again, I'm not predicting the gap. I'm not saying NVIDIA is going to open tomorrow morning at 1200. Some people think that. I'm saying if it does, I will rate it and then I'll know if I'm going to go long it or short it. Okay. So the rating system is something that I use after I see the gap. Okay. The rating system looks at 26 points on the daily chart of a stock. This is what you learn in the class. It's 14 hours long. The rating system is a checklist. The checklist tells you what to look for in the direction of the stock. Here was another one we did. This is BA. Again, this was another put. Uh, we did the BAs, 424. Oh, this was a quick one here. We got the sell-off, boom, dropped out, done, boom. And again, this is another one I've been watching, BA. BA has earnings, July, I think, are the next BA earnings. This is another one to watch. Again, this is so cheap to be able to do a stock at $165 a share and pay $175 per contract is so cheap. And this actually, I sold it at six, it went over six. Huge trade here. Again, what happened in the BA? It sold off like a hot cake, okay? So again, it sold off like a hot cake. So if you risk $87.50, you would've made $21,250. If you risk $1,050, you would've made $25.50. 
There are trades like this. This is in and out the next day, and you would have made over 200%. I call trades like this all the time. Microsoft, we did the 405 puts. This was the 29th. Oh, this was this week. It's closed here, gap down, sold off again like a hot cake. Again, it got dumped. It got dumped. It got dumped by institutional money. This was more expensive. Of course, this is over $400 a share. You could have done one. You could have risked one and spent $550. Great trade, over 100%. Same thing here. If you did two contracts, risk 1100 you could have made 1300 in that Microsoft. You could have got it in and out, again, in 24 to 48 hours. It's all about money management, though, in reference to once you get the consistency with the system because you still have to put stops in. <laughs> you still have to think about what you're trading. You know, you can't risk a different amount in every trade. You can't do one NVIDIA contract if it costs $25 for one or $2,500 for one contract if you're not risking $2,500 in every trade. Because then inevitably you would do the one NVIDIA, that will be that will lose, and then you'll have to do 10 trades to break even or be up. So you got to be consistent. And again, most of the things we do are pretty reasonable price with the exception of NVIDIA. That's probably the most expensive one that we do. Um, how do I balance the effect of the market of trend against shorting? I don't care because I'm doing specific stocks. That's the beautiful thing about doing gaps, about using my system, okay? If you had to get the market direction correct every day to make money in trades, which a lot of people need that for what they're doing because people want to buy dips and things like that, while that works in a trending bullish market, it doesn't work every day, even in a trending bullish market, you will be wrong more than you're ever right. I read the market very well. Even I don't get the market right every day. It will be very difficult for you to have success if you have to read the market direction every day, you won't get it right. You won't. One of the people reasons why people gravitate towards futures, which they want to look at the market, is because they think they can make a lot of money in futures because of the leverage. That's ridiculous. Trading stocks is actually a lot easier, and you don't have to worry about the market because you won't get the market right every day. So that lessens your odds right out of the gate. If you need the market for the trade, it lessens your lot odds right out of the gate. Okay? So it doesn't bother me. Anyways, you've got to make money in this business and you got to make more than you lose. And you have to have some trades that are big, okay? So you can't lose a lot if you want to do this for a career. You've got to focus on quality. I'm typically looking for one-to-one. -one. Sometimes I get more than that, as you saw. I think 50% is good in an option, all right? And again, it's a holiday week. If you're in a trade and you're up money by tomorrow going into Friday, which is low volume, and you're up 65%, I say there's nothing wrong with getting out. But the points tell you where the money is flowing. That's what you need to do. That's what's the important part about it. So why do you need to make trading work? Number one, you need a strategy. For me, it's golden gaps. Can't trade without a strategy. Number two, you need a method and structure to enter the picks. Where am I getting in? Where am I getting out? This was the Disney trade that we did here on the 7th. Stock close here, gap down. This is the one minute. We got in, got out. Done. Boom. Okay? You need a method and structure to enter and exit the picks. Number three, you have to have monetary goals. It should be based on a risk unit, which should be based on your account size, okay? And again, that has to be something that you are consistent with in order to make money. But it's all about the reliability in the system, which means sticking with one thing. That's how you're going to get good. That's how I've gotten good over the years. And again, you know, I could probably be risking more in both my options and my day trades, but I'm in a comfort level now, and I also have a lot going on in the morning because I'm talking at the same time I'm trading, which isn't always easy, but I'm a big talker, but also I'm trying to do everything very fast. So I'm in a good groove running the room, but I could risk more in my trades. People always want to push it and push it, push it, push it. Prove to yourself you can make $1,000 a week. Prove to yourself you can make $500 a day. If you can do that, for a month, then you can up it. I'm very deliberate with what I do. Target today was a good example. As I'm like, wait, 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 wait. And then we struck, we shorted it, we got out, and we were done. We were done. We were done. That was it. It was just like that. But proper education, again, relying on a mentor helps you and learning a system that works over and over again in any market conditions, bullish or bearish. What if the market would turn and fall? What if they raise rates this year? What if the Fed raises rates? God forbid, what if that would happen? Don't think it can. It could. It could happen next year in 2025. The market will sell off. Now, whether that turns the market, I don't know. But it absolutely could create a sell-off. The market's not expecting that. And don't think that can happen. Or another bank going under. That could happen, too. That could happen, too. 
So the Golden Gap course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course teaches what direction to play the stock, also teaches you how to exit it and enter it, and it teaches you how to read institutional money in stocks. It teaches you how to day trade gaps, and you're going to learn this so you can use it. And again, it's something that I will help you with in the room, and the purpose is really to do it for yourself. You learn everything in the class that you don't need me, and you can do it for yourself. But for the day trade room, you've got to have that first half an hour of the day available. But when we're done, we're done quick. If we're done by 9.45, we're done. And the options, you can put the trade on and put a sell order. You don't have to babysit it. I do have targets in the newsletter if you want to watch it, but you're going to learn, again, the rating system, which tells you where the institutional money is going, okay? And if you can learn this, you can do it, and you can do it in options. You can do it in day trades. You could even do it in swing trades, and you decide your risk, And which, of course, you could ask me as well. But every day, that's what I'm doing. It's the point rating system to find the best gap. This is what I focus on. So if you want to empower yourself today to learn this, you can. Again, the Golden Gap course is a complete system to use to trade. And this is how I'm able to make the money that I'm making. And again, I've been doing this for a very long time. So the class is called the Golden Gap course. It's a full and two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. So the next class is in June. The June class is June 8th and 9th. It's coming up 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Class tuition is $69.99. It's online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. The combo, which includes the trends course, which saves you $500, is $79.99. The trends course is June 11th. It teaches you long-term trends in stocks, which is actually important for options trading or swing trading. And then I am doing a Memorial Day package, which is huge. It's Fleet Week here in New York City. Actually, today, I'm going to have to walk down by the river. Today, all the uh, Navy ships came in today to port. They had a parade um, along the Hudson River. It was really beautiful. I saw some of it on the news this morning. But anyways, I'm doing a Memorial Day package that's going on through Memorial Day. If you sign up for the Golden Gap Course Combo, which is $79.99, if you sign up by Memorial Day, you will receive the options newsletter free for one year, the stocks will show live trading room free for one year, again, that's where I call the day trades, the market report subscription free for one year, and the gap options course, which is another class, which is June 13th, 11 to 3. Again, the combo class tuition gets you the golden gap course, which is June 8th and 9th, and the trends course, and this special ends Memorial Day. If you want to sign up, you must email me for the forms to sign up, and let me see if there's any questions here. Um, let me see. I answered Fernando's. Um, somebody's asking, you wait until the spread has narrowed to buy the options. The first few minutes are running away. So about, as far as options go, if I call a trade like at 7 a.m., you can't do that trade till after the open, okay? That means I like it, I know I like it, I know I want to do it, whatever. Anyways, you don't have to do it right on the open, no, because options can open spready. Some are spreadier, more spreadier than others. You cannot trade options in the pre-market unless it is the, uh, the market indices. The QQQs and the SPY, you actually can enter 10 minutes before the open. I don't do that, but I'm letting you know you could. Um, but everything else like Starbucks or Disney, yes, you have to wait till after the open. Yes, sometimes things open spready, not everything, but like, I mean, NVIDIA is always spready. But you can wait five minutes or 10 minutes. If I call a trade at 7 a.m., I wouldn't wait till 11 a.m. to do it, if that's what you mean. So anything that's typically spready once it opens will wiggle and jiggle and work itself out in several minutes if it has volume. And all the ones that we're doing are 99.99% of the things we're doing. I'm really trying to stick with things that have volume. I really don't want to do anything that doesn't have volume as far as a day trade or an option. So no, you don't have to enter it right away at 930. But no, it could move and could move pretty quick. But again, I'm not exiting my options in two minutes like my day trades. So it's, it's okay. You pay what you pay for it. We're not trading options for 20 cents or pennies. We're trading options and even day trades. I'm trying to get a move, a momentum, a dollar, two dollars more. I want a, I want it to move. You know what I'm saying? Like it's got to move. So you could wait a few minutes, but you don't have to wait, or you shouldn't wait too long. 
Any other questions from anyone? So it's an exciting night, really exciting night to see what happens. Again, everyone and their brother thinks NVIDIA is going to be up at brand new all-time highs and is going to go crazy over 1,000. So if it doesn't, I won't be surprised. I'm not in it. The options, I guessed, guessed on Monday, the options for at, at the money were four grand. I was close. They were $4,500 for a NVIDIA call that expires Friday three days ago at the money insanity you don't you don't you don't do that into the into the into the into the into the earnings and it could it could tank it could tank 200 bucks and that will really rock this market so it's a it's going to be an exciting night to watch what happens it's going to be an exciting day tomorrow to train what am i going to do i don't know till i get up in the morning but i will be watching the video tonight as well after four so if you're interested in learning my method if you have questions if you have any questions at all Email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Anybody have any more questions before I let Jeff jump on? We did have some good questions here. All right. Thank <laughs> cool. you.